this Easter reflection, we're looking at a very familiar passage in John's Gospel, The Last Supper, where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And that's in John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. At the beginning of the passage, Jesus is thinking about what was to come. He knew that Judas was, was planning to betray him and what was to come for him, his death and resurrection. And he draws comfort from also knowing he was going back to his father. Because of the climate and very stony and dusty roads, most homes had hand washing facilities and sometimes a servant to do the job. He teaches them about a very important principle for all believers, that of humility. He doesn't use words to teach them, but actions. Actions can speak louder than words. They create pictures in the mind. These pictures would remain in their minds longer than mere words. This action was repeated daily in most homes and seeing it done would be a constant reminder of the lesson Jesus taught them through it. He took his robe off put a towel around his waist and got some water. This is how a servant stroke slave would be dressed and again a clear picture of a servant. He then proceeds to wash their feet. I imagine the disciples would have been horrified to see Jesus, their Lord and Master, doing the job of a slave. He must have already done some washing before he got to Peter but there's no indication of anyone saying anything. I think they might have been stunned into silence by what they were seeing and experiencing. But Peter, known as the outspoken one, remonstrates strongly and tries to stop Jesus washing his feet. When Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And then Peter goes from one extreme to the other by telling Jesus, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus' answer was interesting. In terms of hygiene for the body only, the feet, which were dirty and dusty, needed washing. But then he says, and you are clean, though not every one of you. This was a spiritual answer. Jesus. Ephesians is the next one. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of malicious behaviour. Instead, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And then in James we read this, that the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no partiality and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of goodness. The next one is from Colossians. Since God chose you to be the holy people whom he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. You must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the most important piece of clothing you must wear is love. Love is what binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are all called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the words of Christ rule in your hearts and make you wise. Use his words to teach and counsel each other. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus, all the while giving thanks to him and to God the Father. And I'd like to finish with a verse from Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus is saying his last goodbye to his disciples. 
I have been given complete authority in heaven and earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age.